Hi friends, thanks to EA and Respawn for inviting me to this early access event. I got to play Apex Legends Season 19 early, and I've got all the details for Season 19 that I saw and heard from the devs, plus actual gameplay from Season 19, all in this video, including the new Stormpoint updates. Before I start, can I also say a big thank you to all of you who have been watching me and supporting me all this time. It means a lot to me to be invited to this early access event for Season 19, so a big thank you for all the support. Now let's get into the good stuff. I'll start with the big one that lots of you have been asking asking for. Yes, cross progression is coming with the launch of season 19. Now lots of people have been saying different things, but the way the devs explained it is basically when you log in, if multiple accounts are detected, you'll see a notification for merging your Apex accounts under the same EA ID, which kind of acts like folding those accounts under a master. Also bear in mind it's going to be taking the stats of whichever account is the highest. Now with this you'll also see figures for the total number of new things like cosmetics, heirlooms, heirloom shards and packs, all of which will be merged. And the same goes for legend tokens, crafting metals and apex coins. So essentially you won't be losing any of that stuff, they'll add them all together. Moving on to the battle pass, it's pretty standard, you get a bunch of new skins and stuff you can earn, there will be one legendary for Octane and I think there's one for Rampart as well. Also the Rampage is going to be the reactive skin and I think it's back to being level 100 and 110, unlike in season 18 where they moved the first one earlier in the battle pass. Another big thing you might not have heard about is that when you respawn, you now respawn with your armour and the weapons you had when you died, plus a full stack of ammo. You do lose your attachments though, and you won't respawn with care package weapons if you had any. On the flip side though, you will keep any evo shield progress you had when you died. As you can see in this example, Ashton and Joe helped me die, and then they respawned me, and I kept my evo shield progress, my evo shield itself, the helmet and the flatline, but not the bow check bow because it's a care package weapon. So this is definitely something I think could be a subtle but significant change. Now I should say we found this feature out during our playtesting, but we didn't really get to test it fully, so it's possible there could be a bit more to the way this works. Also at the moment we're not sure if this is pubs only or if it's for ranked as well. I'll do my best to keep you up to date though with how this new respawning works when we find out more. A bit of an obvious one that you know about now, Conjure is going to be the new legend, she is going to be a support legend, so she'll be able to open those blue loot bins. Some details on her abilities if you haven't seen. Her passive is called Savior's Speed, and it essentially gives her a burst of speed when running forward towards allies that are out of tactical range. It's a little bit like Bangalore's Double Time, although it doesn't feel quite as long. Her tactical is Radiant Transfer. This lets you send out temporary shields to your teammates, and also to yourself, but you don't get as many as you give to your teammates. Her ultimate's called Energy Barricade, and it deploys a row of shield jamming devices that damage and slow enemies. You shoot them forward similar to Valkyrie's tactical and they'll then drop seven batteries in a row and if you're on the enemy team you can shoot each individual battery to destroy them. I will do a more in-depth guide on Conduit when the season drops though with more statistics and durations of her abilities. Just a little bit of lore on Conduit before we move on if you are a lore fan. Lots of people were thinking she had superpowers because of that radioactive stream for the stories of the Outlands. The devs did confirm that's not actually the case. She isn't a superhero with superpowers, it's simply that she was grabbing that titan battery from the monarch titan and she's essentially built her kit and her suit off of that monarch titan. And a fun little lore fact for you titanfall fans, she worked with Lastimosa Armory to build her suit. Moving on, let's talk about Stormpoint's map changes. Stormpoint's getting one of the biggest map updates we've ever seen, and I got a chance to run around the new map with a bunch of other creators, and I have to say, Stormpoint looks really good now. Shout out to Simply Ashton and Jolas for keeping me company. Now for the map changes. The devs said they've changed something like 40% of the map, and you can really tell that. There's about six new main POIs. There's one called Pylon, which replaces Antenna. It's kind of like Watson's Town Takeover. There are a bunch of Watson-themed Easter eggs there, and she's built this point of interest herself, which ties in with the lore, which I'll talk about in just a second. You'll notice there are some older POIs that are gone as well. Fish Farms has been replaced with Devastated Coast. Shipfall is now Coastal Cap. Gale Station is now Echo HQ. And Zoo Station replaces High Point. Also, some of the other POIs have changed or been altered in appearance and structure. Jurassic Park is a good example of this. They basically replaced the buildings or destroyed some of the buildings and added in some other objects and buildings around the area. They also seem to have got rid of the prowlers, which is good. So hopefully you won't be chased like crazy by prowlers now. 
In terms of the lore behind the map changes, you would have seen from the gameplay trailer at the start, there was this whole situation around the storm on Stormpoint, and with that, it destroyed the energy source which Stormpoint provides to the rest of Gaia. In particular, it powered the whole of Suatamo, which is where Crypto's from by the way. So obviously Watson has a bit of sentimental involvement in trying to fix up Stormpoint to help restore power across Gaia, and indeed for Crypto's home city Suatamo. And along with Echo and the Syndicate, that's where these POIs have spun up from. Moving on to Ranked in Season 19, they're going to tweak the way Ranked works just slightly to hopefully make it a little bit less sweaty with their changes. At the same time, they're going to try and make it a little harder to rank up by ratting, and they're doing this by increasing the points that you can earn, reducing the withheld bonus that you currently get, and they're introducing something new called Promo Trials which I'll cover when Season 19 drops properly, but it's basically a set of trials you'll have to complete to get to the next rank. In terms of ranked rewards, obviously you'll know dive trails are out for the rewards, you won't be getting that in Season 19 for your rank this season, instead you'll be getting those ranked banners. The good news is the devs did confirm those ranked banners will be permanent, unlike the dive trails which were only a season long. Let's finish with talking about the legend and weapon meta. The wingman's going into the care package in place of the L-Star, it's going to have both the skull piss and the booster loader, plus they did a few little tweaks and buffs to it as well, and I did test it out in the firing range, it's pretty strong and it's definitely fun to use. Oh yeah, the care packages will now guarantee a weapon, which I think is a great change, because how annoying was it when you got to a care package and it didn't have a care package weapon in it? In season 19, that's all going to change because you'll now be guaranteed a care package weapon in every care package. Also, the l is going to get a little nerf as it comes out of the care package, but they did say it will be stronger than the last time it was on the floor, so we'll have to see how that one plays out. In terms of other weapon buffs, the bow check is getting a buff to its spread pattern with the scatter rounds. I did a bit of testing on this in the firing range, and it's definitely easier to hip fire now with the bow check bow and those scatter rounds. In addition to this, the charge rifle, longbow, and sentinel will all get an increase in projectile size and growth, which you can class as a bit of a buff for long range shots. Also, the charge rifle is going to get a slightly improved bullet drop ballistic, so you should find it a bit easier to hit long range shots with the charge rifle in season 19. Now in terms of nerfs, the 30-30 repeaters getting a bit of a nerf, they're essentially increasing the hipfire spread with successive shots. The hemlock's the other weapon that's had a slight damage nerf, but from my testing, again, it still feels pretty strong, and I was definitely able to rack up a fair few kills during the games that I played. In terms of going into the crafter, the R301 and the vault will start the season in the crafter, which means you won't be able to pick them up off the floor. Also, another change to the crafter is that you won't be able to craft digi threats anymore. You can only find them as floor loot, which should definitely help reduce that bang digi threat meta. Oh yeah, and because the wingman's going into the care package, the boosted loader is removed from the floor. In terms of legends, they are nerfing Catalyst and Bangalore a little bit. Catalyst, Tactical and Passive is reduced from 3 down to 2, and I feel like that's more significant for her passive. Alt-wise, the lifeline of that wall she throws down is being reduced, and also the cooldown starts a bit later now, it's not going to start until the wall goes down. For Bangalore's nerfs, the duration of her double times down, the time of the smoke being visible is reduced, and the alt spread is also reduced. A few other little fixes or improvements, nothing major though, was for Wraith, she's getting a bit of a clean up for her passive, so it's going to be more consistent. Pathfinder can now scan a care package after someone on your team has scanned it before, which is a really good improvement because if you played Pathfinder in Season 18, you would have noticed if someone like an Octane scans a care package before you on your team, then you can no longer scan it as Pathfinder, which is really annoying because you then couldn't charge your ultimate. Vantage did get a little buff as well, her ultimate bullets have been increased to 6. And that's pretty much it for the main things coming in Season 19, there will be a few other little bits that you'll see in the patch notes when they're released, so keep a lookout on Respawn's website for that, because there will still be a few little interesting things in there. For the last point, for the map rotations, Stormpoint, Olympus and Broken Moon will be at the start of Season 19. But I think you're going to like Stormpoint, the changes personally I feel are really good and it's definitely a lot more fun to play on that map now. Anyway that's about it for this video, feel free to ask me any questions you've got in the comments, don't forget to like and subscribe, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you later.